Hi, everyone. Good evening. How are you doing? I'd like to ask, can we all hear me, please? Okay, seems like I have issues with my audio. Sorry, can you hear me? What's wrong? Okay, it seems like I'm, I have issues with... Can you hear me, please? We can hear you, we can hear you. Okay, I, I did not receive any reply. All right, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to let you know that you can as well use the chat box if you would like to say anything. So good evening, everyone. So we have six people on the meeting today. I'd really love it if we could share the flyer on our WhatsApp status, share the flyer with your friends with the link to join this meeting. I would really appreciate that. But before we go ahead, I'd like to do what I did yesterday. So I'd like us to just give some of us to give a brief introduction of ourselves. So I have a few persons here and I'd like to call the first person I saw on the call and that's um, Mr. Omitade Tululope. So hi, Mr. Omitade, could you just give a brief introduction of yourself? Tell us who you are, what you do and any additions, thank you. All right, since um, Mr. Amitade is not responding, I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Caleb Adegbite. I saw you yesterday as well. Thank you so much for coming early today. So I'd like you to, to give an introduction of yourself. Okay, Mr. Caleb is also on transit. I guess we're not doing introductions today again. <laughs> it's fine. So I'd like us to start. Hi, great minds. Good evening. I'm super excited to be here again today as your compare. And I remain Greatness Latono, and you can call me the global MC. Yesterday, we had two intelligent speakers in person of Dr. Mushope, who spoke on faith, the excellence of the God factor, and Dr. Victor Ajekige, who spoke on your health must not suffer. We learned quite a lot yesterday, and if you missed it, you can still rewatch the session on YouTube at Patrick Oedili. Well, today we have another set of great speakers, and when I mean great speakers, I mean it. We have Mr. Jeremiah Bankole and Mr. Timmy. Right now, I need you to get your notes and pens ready because it's going to be an amazing flight. Hello, Mr. Patrick, how are you doing today? Like I said, yesterday's session was mind blowing and I know you can testify to that. So would you like to tell the audience what they should expect in today's session? All right, um, good evening everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us on the call tonight. So this evening, um, I want everybody on this call to share the link, the meeting link with all their loved ones. Let's have more people join us. Let's have um, our loved ones join us. So tonight we'll be having um, Mr. Jeremiah Bankole um, speak with us on um, money matics, the path to financial freedom. Um, as we shared, you know, some days ago, Mr. Abankoli is a 
business development and business design expert. Um, is um, an expert when it comes to money matters. So it will be um, sharing on money matics. And secondly, we have him, Mr. Timi Awesu. Mr. Timi Awesu is a certified um, HR manager and also um, is a business administrator. So we'll be sharing on um, relationships, the catalyst called relationships. So um, tonight's session is not it's not a session you want to miss at all. Please, as many as you want um, their life to upgrade and move to the next level, please share the link with them. Let them come up on the call and let's have a good ride together. So thank you. Thanks for coming. All right. Thank you for that. So like Patrick has said, we need you to please post the pictures on your WhatsApp status, share with your friends. If you have loved ones, share with them and share the link to join this meeting right now. Thank you so much. And God bless you as you do that. So right now, we're going to be having our first speaker. And I'm going to be reading his biography. I would have really loved to have an interactive session with the audience, but it seems like our audience are still, you know, calm and cool. So I feel like, you know, Mr. Jeremiah Bankole will bring in some eat and that will make us, you know, start talking. So after a session, I would ask questions. And if you have any questions that you'd like to ask him, please note them down and he's going to answer all your questions after. So right now we're reading his biography. Um, okay, Africa should not become a byword in the name of other continents, but we have to build collectively to take it to its rightful place in the League of Continents. <laughs> Jeremiah Bankoli is a brand bent on unlocking the full potential of Africa yeah. it is a relentless advocate of building leverage between mission-oriented talents and needed capital to build the future of Africa. Over the years, he has built a solid repute in leading project teams, executing projects, and building solutions that tackle problems effectively triggering social and economic impact in underdeserved communities. He has experience in developing compelling strategies for project leadership and management, while also having vast experience in business development, marketing, data analysis, design, business growth, consulting, and technology advancery. Jeremiah Bankole continues to balance his entrepreneurial passion and continent building drive with an unwavering commitment to his family while being very active in his Christian faith. So ladies and gentlemen, with the Rouse Innovation, I want you to start clapping in your closet. I would like you to welcome Jeremiah Bankole. Hello, Mr. Jeremiah, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? All right. Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Uh, we are very excited to have you here. Thank you very much. And I Thank hope you. Hope you are ready for us because we are very ready for you too as well, sir. Well, it's an honor to do this. So yeah, let's do it. All right, that's great. The floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, Brigitte. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Um such an honor to do this. Um, thank you so much, Patrick. And thank you so much to everybody who organized this. Now, please, this is not a one man thing, right? As, <laughs> as many, many, you know, um, speaking invites or, or speakers, right? Who gets to speak on different platform actually get to do. Um, sometimes it's always monotonous where one person is just speaking and some persons of background are listening. So I want this to be interactive to a certain degree. And I will appreciate that everybody sort of like, you know, we could make this lively together. So my name is Jeremiah, Adibaya Jeremiah Bankoli. 
and um, I'm grateful to be here. Um, so I'm going to be speaking of monematics today. Uh, to be quite sincere, when Patrick actually reached out to me and shared the vision of what he wanted to do, uh, I remember telling him that as much as possible, we needed to have more platform like this where people can get to listen to different perspectives um, that gets to shape, you know, what the future could look like for them. And um, and I'm so glad. But any of your friends, before we go, go into the deep, right? Um, if you know any of your friends, if you know anybody who could be a benefit, you know, from this, you might want to share because this would absolutely, you know, uh, help somebody. Okay, that being said, so first off, I, I was thinking, do I start with a presentation? But I know I just have 30 minutes, right? If I am right, please confirm. Yes, sir. Is Patrick there? Okay. Good, good. So I know I just have 30 minutes and I was thinking, should I do a slide? Kind of like, oh, you know, but I think I'll just go. I'll just go on ahead. I have my slides here, but having to sort of like follow them would take more longer time. So I think I'll just um, leave it out. But I could always share the slide as to which I spoke from. I'll share it to the organizer. So if anybody's in need of that, um, you can always sort of like... Um, get it from them okay so yes so speaking about monematics especially in today's nigeria today's nigeria and emphasis on you know today's nigeria because we all know you know what's been happening as of recent so a certain person goes to the market today and you want to get something of one era and then tomorrow you come back and scaled up to 10 era you're wondering like from, from where to where and you're just like i'm not buying you know you probably just go to the next shop and you come back in the next five minutes and they're telling you that it has increased the game by five naira. <laughs> What's happening? And I can tell you for a fact, everybody's facing the same thing because we're actually in a, you know, very high part in play environment. And so what that means is um, the prices of good and services are actually, you know, they're actually scaling up, you know, even with almost every day, every day going by. And in such an environment, the dynamics that it takes, right, to actually, you know, navigate the part of your finances, right, what used to work then might not necessarily work in today's day. Uh, and why is it so? Because um, the environment sort of like, you know, has changed. And as such, you also need to be able to change, you know, in terms of your strategy, right, in terms of like managing your finances. So when you talk about monematics, what I hear is how do you manage your finances? Although I'm going to be bringing another perspective to the table um, today, even as we go on forward. So I wrote here something very, very significant. I don't know the people that I'm speaking with. I wish I had like sort of like a data so that I can, you know, really like tell your suit to them. I don't know if um, most of the people here are students. Can somebody confirm for me? And most people here are students and most people here, you know, uh, probably, you know, outside So do you have that data? Can anyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I don't know if Mr. Patrick would like to. Oh, okay, good. That. So he said, he said most of you guys are students, good. Mm, so I'll just speak from the student perspective and also I'll be speaking because the dynamics are totally different, right? Um, although same foundational principles, but then different dynamics as to which you, you know, you go about them. So I wrote here, life is not, you know, life doesn't have a roadmap. And what that means is that what worked yesterday can work tomorrow, but definitely might not work also tomorrow. So that is life is something that comes with chances, right? Chances in which at the end of the day, you were supposed to, you know, study patterns to be able to know strategies that can work for each turning day. So life doesn't come with a map. It doesn't come with a direction. And as such, somebody who is going to be 
a visionary, as somebody who is going to, you know, excel in terms of his finances, must be able to, you know, see things from, from a very far end, from an end-to-end -end perspective, you know, to be able to know what strategy can actually work. That's why I was saying what would have worked maybe in 2015. Now, I mean, it's for, for most of you guys here that are students, I'm going to shock you, right? Um, so if you were in 2015 and you came out of school and you were handing about 150,000 there, I can tell you you're a very big boy. Very big boy in Nigeria. With that 120,000 there, you could travel to buy with, say, your three-month salary, right? Just saved up together. And then you'd be able to travel to Dubai because at that time, I think a ticket to Dubai was about 300,000 there, right? Now, in today's age, even if you come out of school and you're earning about a 500,000 there, you might still struggle. And so that's the context of the, you know, the world which we live in because the world is ever changing. And in a situation where in Nigeria, I do not want to use negative words where we are having sort of like declines here and there, although, I don't want to go into that analysis, but just it will not be to the context of this conversation. But what we are having sort of like declines, right? In our, you know, the value of our money. It's super important that you understand that what worked yesterday, you know, definitely doesn't work again today. So to a certain degree, every single person in the room must have, you know, something really important, financial literacy. Financial literacy, it's super important. Whether you went to school, you studied economics or you studied any course that had to do, you know, the commercial, you know, angle, you know, when, when we were mostly in secondary school or high school, we don't use high school in Nigeria, right? But secondary school, you know, there's a commercial class where you then graduate to the university and then you get to study courses centered around these things, right? Maybe accounting, maybe, you know, and all of that business and, uh, and all of that, right? But super important, every single person must learn something called financial literacy. It's super important. That you should not be an individual without that knowledge because that's what saves you. That's what saves you. That's what enables you to be able to move from point A to point B and continue to excel up, you know, in an upward trajectory. So what is financial literacy? So according to Corporate Finance Institute, they define financial literacy as that cognitive understanding financial components coming together and skills coming together, right? To enable an individual, you know, have a better, you know, specifics, right? To be able to counter financial roadblocks, which in turn decreases the chances of the person, you know, going into an economic distress. So I'll take that again. Financial literacy is that cognitive understanding of financial components and skills coming together, right? That allows an individual to be better prepared, you know, for specifics that allows the removal of financial roadblocks that decreases the chances of a person, you know, going into an economic distress. Now, you see a lot of people, you know, actually talking about, you know, how this is not working, this is not working, how they are not even able to save up, how they are not able to. But strongly, the truth remains that no matter what ladder you are, if you do not have financial literacy, you are not able to move from point A to the next level. And when you even move from point A to next level, maybe say luck happens or, you know, you are just shifted into that next level by chance, right? You would also not be able to manage that next level where you are. And at some point, luck does run out. And so something that's super important that everybody should have in your house now is financial literacy. And simple things that, that, that I call them the elements of financial literacy that everybody should be able to understand. You need to be able to understand budgeting investing, borrowing, taxation, and personal finance management. How do you juggle these things together to ensure that at the end of the day, you can compound your money, you can grow your money, you can grow the pie. And so the first basic thing I would like to speak about is budgeting, right? As I am right now, I remember when I got out of school, uh, which is 2022, I actually created an Excel sheet. And if you're in school here, I believe that these things, you should know them. Just, you know, there are very feral skills you should have, like very basic skills you should have, being able to sort of like, you know, use Excel, use Word document, 
you know, and all. I know they don't teach you these things in school, but you really have to learn them. Even when you do your project, sometimes most of you outsource your project. It shouldn't be, right? Because these things allow you to learn these things at a faster pace, all right? So I remember that I had my spreadsheet, you know, and then I would literally take an account and even very much, very much well, I can tell you for a fact that there's so many technological platforms out there that allows you to be able to project. I know there's track it, right? You might want to take notes of that information, track it. Quite a number of technological hubs that allows you to project. But I personally would not, you know, appreciate that route. And why I don't appreciate that route is very simple because it does not give me a breakdown. It does not give me a breakdown of every specific thing. I want to see where all my money flows. Because at the end of the day, mismanagement starts from little drops of water that you cannot account for. Something as simple as 1,000 naira, you just decided to spend in a certain way. Something as little as just 500 naira, it's just 200 naira, it's just, I'm sorry, you know. By the time you accumulate these things, then it turns into a big amount of money. And then you're like, 10,000, how did I spend this? How did I? Now, I'm not talking about the reality of Nigeria when you go to the market and you see things are scaled up and then you're know, asking no. But the fact that money came into you and you don't just know how it went. That's why many people will tell you that if you know how to manage money, money will know how to stay with you. But if you don't know how to manage money, it will just be a visitor. It will come in. And trust me, we will go out the next minute. Okay? And so it's super important for you to be able to understand that budgeting is that first layer. How do you sit down as a young man? How do you sit down as a young woman? I say to myself, I have this social amount of money coming in for me every month. How do I budget in such a way where, you know, I have money going into my personal development. I have money going into this certain segment. What amount of money do I have going into this? I'm being able to see and track and when you track, you're not just tracking alone. You're tracking from a standpoint that, you know, this is something I'm sticking by. So a lot of you have that tendency in you. You just go somewhere and then something you never even thought about before. You just liked it and then you just bring out your money and you just plug on it. Right? Being able to, you know, stop all of those tendencies that you have. Right? And there are different tactics to this things to ensure that at the end of the day, you know, you don't just plug on necessarily. You don't just spend on necessarily. But first, as a student, because I know I'm speaking to students here, not necessarily people who might have graduated, or even if you have graduated, right? It's being able to account for every single money, right? So it allows you to track all of your money going to. So secondly, I, I spoke about investing, right? I spoke about investing. But before I go into all that, I just want to speak about the cycle, especially the five stages of financial literacy. And then I'll sort of like tell us it, right? So students who are in here, right? So we have different five stages, five stages of financial literacy. Right? Anybody who is hoping to get to the stage of financial freedom one day. So I'll just put this as a basic that you can hold that in your bucket while you then go on to talk about other um, aspects of um, Sorry, who is that? Um, do you want to move? All right, thank you very much. All right, so five stages of financial literacy. Super today. I'm sure by the time I speak of these things, in your head, you're like, ah, this is where I am. <laughs> this is where I am. All right. So the first stage is dependence, right? Because of our culture, the way we are brought up, you know, especially here in Africa. A lot of the time, when we grow up, we are reliant on our parents, right? And so that stage is called dependence. Dependence, when you are reliant on your parent or your guardian. You reliant on, you know, your relatives. You reliant on people that are around you, you know? Dependence at that point in time. So they, they, they account for, if not 90% of the income you get, you know, gifts here and there or money from, you know, this person, your parent, you know, just keeps you going. There is that part. Now, dependence for a lot of the time, if you look at the cycle, right, starts from when you are your cradle, right, up until most people, you know, till university age, uh, till when they are done from the university, when their parents now tell them and sit down with them and tell them, hey, what's the try for at all? Although for some people, the dynamics is different. 
And so what the dynamics tells them is that their parents are willing to even support because they look at the way the whole economy is and some of them even support till people get married. But if you know where, what family you are from, you know where your cycle stops. So I'm trying to say that the cycle does not just stop literally at certain point for some certain people, right? It is that it could extend for some people. However, there is that stage, dependence, where you have reliant on parent and guardian. I can give you an example of mine. So when I finished from school, I knew it. I even told God, sorry, I told God that, you know, I didn't want to be in that stage, you know, of finishing school. And so when I even finished school, I had a conversation with my parents and I knew it was shifting towards the trajectory where, you know, they were pushing you out from dependence into a place where I would call the next stage. And the next stage is what we call solvency, solvency. So what's solvency? Solvency is the ability for you to be able to meet your financial obligations. So you want to buy data, you are able to pay for your data. You want to buy toiletries, you are able to pay for your toiletries. You want to pay for your rent, you are able to pay for your rent. Although I, I, I should say this, some people still stand between the intersection of solvency and dependence. There is that path, right? Where at the end of the day, you still get support from your parent, and then also you're also in the solvency stage are able to meet all of your financial obligation that comes with who you are, where you are at that point in time. Okay? The next point of the curve is what we call the section. The stability section is when you are able to create, you know, emergency fund. So it is that at the end of the day, you are not just meeting your financial obligation. This comes, you're paying for this. This comes, you're paying for this. This comes, you're pay, being able to pay for this. But being able to build a fund that, say something happens to you tomorrow, you're able to rise up and say, oh, okay, I can pay for this. So you know that you're getting to a level of stability. And for a lot of people in Nigeria, I can tell you for a fact that there are not a lot of people in the stability section. Yes. A lot of people, I'm sorry to say, they are just one sickness away from poverty. They are just one emergency away from poverty. They are just one emergency away from, you know, staying in the rabbit hole over and over again and circling around it. So you need to be able to progress from that stage, from dependence to solvency and then to stability, right? So I want to hurry up with this so that we can move into other sections that are also very important. Then there is security. So security is where it's at the point where, you know, you're now secured. You do not have any debt profile. And when I mean debt profile, because there's good debt, there's bad debt. What is good debt? Good debt is a debt that you actually incur that at the end of the day is for, you know, a cost that can give you sort of like a good return. And the return might not necessarily be money-wise, right? But a good return, maybe development into yourself, right? right or development into a certain cost right where at the end of the day in the long run you'll be able to pay off the debt right or be being able to develop skills that will be able to allow you pay off the debt but there's bad debt where at the end of the day you borrow money and you see people plunge on phones you see people plunge on bags you see people plunge that's being you know not being that that's that's financial illiteracy to some level because that's bad debt that thing you just bought at the end of the day would decrease in value. You're not able to gain money from it, right? And you're not able to pay off your debt. So when you're able to get to that security, you know, angle is when you are able to, you know, eliminate debt absolutely. And then the last stage is where, you know, is independence and freedom, you know, um, colonial rule, right? So when you have more than enough, more than enough to cover your need, more than enough, more than enough that you cannot invest into meeting certain objectives, certain specific goals, right? So that's the stage of independence and freedom. Now, running through the cycle, right, this cycle, right, or the different stages, let me put it that way, right? I'm sure you probably know in your head where you stand at the moment. So now the context is now, how do you move from one stage to another stage, how do you move from dependence to solvency? How do you move from solvency to stability, from stability to security, and then finally to independence and freedom? And so,
I remember when, when I was in school, and I was really big on moving away from the dependent segment. I was always looking for um, investing to, you know, obviously there are different type of, you know, asset classes which you can actually invest into, right? And we have um, we have real estate, we have stock market, we have bonds and mutual fund, we have collectibles. When we mean collectibles, we have gold, hard work, diamond, right? We have cryptocurrency. They call them the other, um, you know, alternative asset classes, right? We have all of these categories, right? So these are where you can invest your money into. But at that time, I was really vast with the stock market. So it was super important for me to sort of like, you know, put, put money into there with a the hope that, you know, the money would compound and at the end of the day, I'll get money out. But you know one thing? I always found out that I always sabotaged myself. And I sabotaged myself in a way that when I run into need, in my head, there is money somewhere that I'd already invested into. But then, for you to be able to gain returns on that money, you need to be able to leave it for a spread of a tenor or a spread of a certain time, right? Say two years, three years, even as long as five years, 10 years, okay? Because that's how you, you're able to gain your money back. But because I'm in need of money, there's nowhere to run to. I can't even borrow. My friends are saying they don't have. So what do I do? I cash out the money again that I've already invested in. So I found out that in a bid for me to grow my money, I was sabotaging myself. And I found a secret. So if you are a student here, or you just finished from the university, or as a young Nigerian youth, the first thing I'll tell yourself, do not... You know, do not run after, you know, other asset classes. The best asset class you can invest into right now is yourself. I repeat that again. The best asset class you can invest into right now is yourself. Hmm. That is, you're being able to invest into yourself where at the end of the day, you can then begin to command some certain level of money for the value which you bring to the table. So the best form of investment at this stage is yourself. And I wrote three things here. I said, for you to be able to invest into yourself, there are three Ds, very important three Ds you need to be able to understand, right? Number one, you need to be able to understand that your path, that is your career pathway, right? Your career pathway, whatever it is you choose, you want to become. Whether you like now, you know, I had greatness say, you know, she wanted to become, you know, or she's forecast, she has a, a, a forecast, right, to become one of the greatest companies, right, by being a global company, right? There is that path. That's a career, career pathway, right? Now, whilst that is true, and that's a certain pathway you want to go into, right, there is a need for you to be able to double down and buckle down on yourself, invest into yourself, invest into resources that would make you better. That when people want to, you know, ascribe a certain worth to what you bring to the table, it increases by the stretch of time. By the time now, let me run an analysis for you. If at the end of the day, your highest making money scheme, right? or investment costs, right, would give you 10% of your money monthly, all right? Imagine somebody takes 10,000 error and he gives it to that, uh, like invest into that investment scheme, maybe an investment fund. He would get 10% every month. What then happens is that the person will be getting 1,000 error every month. Imagine somebody else's money was 100,000 error. What the person will be getting every month will be 10,000 naira. Imagine if somebody else's money was 1 million naira, what the person will be getting will be 100,000 naira. Imagine what somebody brought, who's some, um, like, you know, somebody investing 10 million naira. What then happens is that at the end of the day, the person gets 10 million naira. So the focus necessarily should not be on managing exactly what you have, but the focus should be on growing the pie. And how do you grow the pie? You grow the pie by focusing on yourself. And that will lead me into the three Ds. You need to be able to delineate, right? Delineate. And what does delineate means? 
ability to be able to focus on a certain career pathway, the ability to be able to focus on a certain area. What path are you headed in? What path are you going into? Are you able to make substantial money from this? And it's not necessarily about following your passion because sometimes passion is not able to bring in money to the table. And I'm not saying you cannot follow your passion. There's some people that their passion does bring money to the table. And that's quite fine and okay. But if you know that your passion is not able to, you know, allow you skill through the, you might want to, you know, have that as a side, right? Well, focus on a pathway that will be able to skill you up. I can tell you for a fact, Dangote does not love cement. It's a passion, okay? Organizations in Nigeria, as a student, maybe working for the likes of KPMG, who have been paid, you know, the top tiers, working for Deliot, working for you know, top organizations in the country. Some of them necessarily did not even have anything to do with consulting in school. But because they saw that as a pathway, but at the end of the day, they can't scale up. They decided to put in their best to get into some type of organizations. Okay? So it's important that you understand this. Delineate. That's the first D. Delineate, right? Delineate. Know your pathway. No, it is different from others and focus on it. Focus, focus on it, right? So the second D is being able to dig deep. That is, you dig deep and invest your time and effort, right? So what does that mean, right? I was reading a certain, you know, reading a certain excerpt of a book um, by, you know, uh, oh, Holy Spirit is not coming to my head right now. Okay, it would come to my head later, right? But the outliers, right? His name is not coming into my head. Anybody who can remind me can definitely do that, right? And yeah, you know, a theory was being put, right? You need 10,000 hours to become a master at something. 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours. But although I have a different perspective to that, you know, I haven't looked at things from different angle, but I don't think that's entirely why we are here. So I, I, I might not really share, right? But what did the person do, right? Um. He studied a lot of athletes, studied a lot of people who had become great. The 1% of the 1%, the top tiers of the category, the people who cannot be put aside, the people who you can recognize as a standalone, and then you call others behind them. The people who at the end of the day command respect, command valor, command, you know, you know, um, absolutely for what they bring to the table, right? He found that one thing, over a strict period of time, over a strict period of years, these people have been able to dig deep and invest in, you know, invest their time, their effort, their money, and their focus into a certain category. And then he was able to extrapolate. And what he extrapolated was that those people spend nothing less than the 10,000 hours on that discipline, on that focus for a number of years. But, uh, okay, don't let, me, don't let me digress a bit. So, for, for that 10,000 hours, it brings you to a certain subject, right? Where you need to be able to understand, for you to be able to dig deep, if you want to go far, you need to be able to, you know, buckle down, invest into yourself, be diligent, see things through, right? For a number of years, for that thing that you're holding out, right? And then you'll be able to scale into that category of an high performer, okay? And then the last stage of the three Ds is diligence. A lot of people lack that spine. A lot of people lack that um, rigidity to be able to see things through to the end. By the time you see challenges, right? You know, the back off, right? They see setbacks, the back off. But being able to, you know, stand in a diligent way is, you know, when you have a challenge from one setback and then you're able to come again Again and again and that again. So that resilience. Okay, okay so sorry, who's that? Sorry, can we mute everybody? Okay, good, great. Right? Being able to see things through from the end, despite whatever challenges and setback that you might have. Three days. Super important for you at this point in time, if you're a student or if, you know, you just came out of school, dig deep and then, you know, move across the tiers of the category, right? That I had explained before. Okay, so let's let's just talk about investment because I feel that 
um, I was going to really major on, you know, investing into yourself because I feel that that's what's super important for now for most students to be able to understand. Um, and I'll, I'll say something, right? Because I see a lot of people, especially a lot of young people, don't get into that bubble where at the end of the day, you really want to, because you see people, you see the level of people, people have gotten into, and then you now have this unnecessary, um, you know, built up haste to be able to, you know, get to a certain height. Be patient. It's a long goal. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. <laughs> and I'm saying that for somebody here today. You know, that should unlock something into your mind. You know, it's a marathon. It's a marathon. Where at the end of the day, you cannot necessarily get to the stage where somebody, you know, sort of like double down, built for 20 years, and then you want to be able to get there in three months. Whilst in our age and time today, speed is super important, right? That is, at the end of the day, somebody who has spent... And that's another perspective I wanted to bring into the 10,000, you know, theory, right? That has been postulated in the book called Outliers, right? Speed is super important, right? Being able to know how to do things. A faster rate. It's actually different in you know, old place, you know, spending 10,000 hours, you know, on a certain thing, right? Because... If you spend 10,000 hours on a certain thing, right? And you are not careful, you will spend 10,000 hours on a thing that might be out of trend, okay? You need to be able to have a eyes, you know, that sees from the top of the mountain, right? See where things are going to, right? And then being able to navigate your path around that, for an example. AI is coming into the you know the scheme of things. Before we never had anything like ChatGPT, where at the end of the day you could just put in prompts and then you have you know detailed answers at the quick of your fingertip. And trust me, most of you who are listening to me here today. Your children will be taught by robots. Most of you, your households by probably robots. You know, so many many other things. You'll be taught in school by robots, and so many other things that that will happen in the world. You know, in a few years from now. So what then happens is. For a person not to go out of trend and not being able to command enough, enough money, right? To be able to scale across the ladder of financial, you know, one's financial goal. Please let me know my time so that um, I know when to stop and then when we can move into question. Okay. Um, and that's to Patrick and um, greatness. You can just text me. Right? You want to be able to, you know, know what is coming and being able to, you know, properly position yourself. So as a student right now, what are the things, the softwares that I need to know in that discipline, that career pathway, in what I'm trying to trying to do, okay? And that sort of like helps. So not necessarily just the amount of hours. Why the amount of hours, the postulated theory is super important. I agree with it absolutely, right? But have an eye of foresight so that at the end of the day, you are not, you know, so many people who oh, were into copywriting, we're into different things at the point in time. When ChatGPT came, people preferred, you know, giving it to ChatGPT, right? Rather than giving them money, you know? But somebody who was in copywriting could have said, yeah, I think AI is coming into the scheme of things. Why not I build my AI bots that allow people to get the best copywriting materials in the world? That's it. Foresight, 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 foresight. So whilst you are investing into yourself, Super important that you understand that you need to be able to have the foresight, you know, and double down in speed. That's how you're able to, you know, act across the stage. So for now, um, there's a lot to share. I mean, um, so 30 minutes cannot do justice to what I have here. But I believe that what I've been able to share sort of like unlocks, you know, the light bulb on the hearts of quite a number of people, right? So perhaps if you have any question for me, um, I'll be happy to answer them at the moment. Thank you very much. Thank you. So wow. greatness, um, over to you. All right, sir. Wow, how amazing. You know, when we're starting, I told you guys that we have a set of great speakers today. And I'm so super excited that you can see that for yourself. Thank you so much, Mr. Jeremiah, for 
blast. I learned a lot and I do hope that everyone listening also learns quite a lot as well. So right now I'd like us to ask questions. So does anyone have questions for our speaker? You could write it in the chat box or unmute your mic and ask. Do we all have questions? Okay, if you do not have questions, I have questions. So, Mr. Jeremiah, uh, my question is, you know, how can students start saving for the future, even with a limited income? Okay, so thank you very much for that question, Greatness. So if I would tell you the truth, <laughs> it's quite a vast what many people will tell you. Many people tell you you save quite a number of amount of money. But yeah, it's not necessarily true because at the end of the day, before you know the savings that you have. Now, savings is a very good culture. Let me put that as foundation, right? And you, it's sort of like you, you can see from a way an athletes build up their muscles, right? Um, you know, every weightlifters and all of that, you know, spend a number of amount of time, you know, trying to work on their arms, you know, to be able to lift some certain weights. And that's the way savings is, being able to stash away money, right, for future use. But at this stage, as a student, that money, I'll tell you, invest it into yourself. Invest into yourself okay. where at the end of the day, you're able to grow the pie. And then you can also then, you know, build up the culture of saving when you've been able to grow the pie, that is your income, have been able to grow, right? And then you can then save more better. Now, let's just build a scenario. Imagine you have 10,000 air, right? And then, okay, the normal rule would be that you save at least 10% of whatever comes in for you, right? And then you're saving 1,000 air. Right? And you decided that this money, I'm stashing it away, you know, a bit for me to be able to develop myself. So that is, you put away money, you buy costs, a certain thing. You take that cost, you get mastery of that cost. And then when next you're able, somebody comes for your services, or perhaps you apply for a job if you're going down, you know, employment career trajectory. There are three types of ease, right? Some people go for further education, some people will go for you know, employment. Some people at the end of the day would go for, you know, setting up their business, entrepreneurial advances, right? So what that means is that at the end of the day, whichever category you are on, you're able to set up a business that can bring in more money because now you have knowledge, right? You're able to close up a knowledge gap by taking up that cost, by improving yourself in a certain regard. If it was employability, you're able to get a pay better job because they can see that you can bring a certain skill set to the table. If at the end of the day, it is for their education, you're able to get that scholarship that puts you in a more better vantage position. So in an economy where we are, I would say, really don't prioritize saving at this point in time. Prioritize investing into yourself, right? Super, super important. Well, saving is important, you. right? But it should be investing into yourself. Okay? Thank you very much. Okay. I, I get that. So you're saying that we should save, we should invest more than we save for ourselves okay that makes sense i have other questions but i'd like to ask this last question so you, you spoke about courses you spoke about books that we can invest in and all so i don't know if you have any books that you would like to recommend for us here or courses that we can go online and check for people that do not know you know the courses they could you know go check for so do you have any Mm, so yeah, um, I, I remember when I was in school, when I wanted to learn about financial literacy to a certain level, I, I remember that I saved up money to be able to take, um, that's Money Africa, you can check out on Instagram, very good, right, um, she talks about different asset classes, and then I think you can pay for a certain, I don't know if that has changed, right, but then it was about 20,000 euros, so, so I saved up that money, and then, you know, I invested into that, that gave me certain knowledge that I actually needed then, and then, um, I'll say something. Um, 
there are a lot of resources online. You just need to search. I, I really cannot remember off my head, but then it's just the context of how curious you are and uh, um, how willing are you to sort of like put in the right words. You find a lot of books that actually teach you, you know, um, a lot on financial literacy. So there are lots of, loads of resources online. You cannot even, you know, um, finish all of them. So yeah, just, just put it into the Google prompt and it'll give you loads of resources. Yeah. All right. So That's I think amazing. somebody has a question. Yes, uh, I can Uche. see. Okay. Yes, it says, please, sir, what a list of self investments. I don't really list get of self investments. That. Um, I don't really get that. Can the person be? If you can take the mic, just express yourself. Um, feel free. You know. Yes, that would be better. Hello, okay. Mr. Uche. Mm -hmm. Is it possible? Mm -hmm. Please, I'm sorry. Yes. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, sir, for the session. I, my question, I meant, like you've been saying, invest in yourself. Like, what are examples of things you can self-invest in? Okay, great. Just least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, there are a lot of things you can invest into yourself, but first you need to be able to understand what trajectory you are going into, right? For most of you, um, some of you have not discovered that yet, which is absolutely fine. Some of you get to discover that further down the line, which is also absolutely fine, right? But being able to understand where you are headed, that would then provide, you know, a list as to which you know you can then begin to tick off your bucket list so for an example somebody says at the end of the day when i get out of school i want to be able to you know bring value to the table you know to whatever organization that i'm going into what are the necessary skills i need to learn and the person then goes on to you know say that okay i probably need communication skills I probably need, you know, um, interpersonal skills. I probably need skills on some certain aspect of tech, you know, depending on whatever segment you're actually going into. And then the person begins to take courses. So courses are one thing, right? You can take courses on that. There are life classes, which you can actually take. You can buy books, right? Go to the bookstore. You know, you see that you have a gap in certain knowledge, right? Write them out, go to the bookstore, see what books you can actually get. Um, yeah, like me, I tell people, um, there's so, there's so much resources online and there's a perspective I've always lived by and it comes from the Bible, right? Come by without money, right? So how does a man buy without money? How a man buys without money is when you have curiosity, right? And so what that means is necessarily you might not even need to spend money. You might not necessarily mean to spend cash, right? But you're able to get value. Right, because you are curious. And so one day when I was in school at that time, I knew I wanted to go into something that had to do with investment or you know building big businesses. So every Saturday day, you know, I had it in my Google Alert. I would read five articles yeah. in the morning and in the night on certain specific prompts about business. Before the close of that day, I read five articles in the morning, read five articles in the night, and absolutely for free. And I found out that my knowledge compounded. People only think about compounding in the aspect of, you know, uh, money. But you can compound the knowledge. And when you're compounding knowledge, you're compounding value, you're able to, you know, command better, you know, um, you're able to command better pay, you know, for whatever value you bring to the table. So like I said, there are a lot of resources online. You can do articles, you can do, you know, books, you can do um, podcasts. There are a lot of podcasts out there. You can do paid classes, you can do courses, you know, and uh, you can do community, you know, membership, like the one I talked about, Money Africa, pay for a community where you get to learn from a community. So many, many, many things out there as a list of, but first, the first stage is know where you are headed and then invest into that, you know, direction. So, yeah, like. Mm. Thank, Thank you so sir. much sir, for asking that question. Um, we have to go, I mean, we have to go to the next session right now, but it seems like someone else is raising is our hand that's Adura Migba or lying car. I don't know if you'd like to ask a question. 
Oh, yes. Good um, evening, everyone. Here's my Sorry, I'll need you to speak louder. <laughs> There's a bit of sound here. We're in Generator okay. Republic, you know, so. <laughs> okay, is it better now? Oh, yeah, more better. More better. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I just wanted to ask um, this question. In this, okay. um, in this time, well, the, the price of things, you know, are high and cost of living and... Um, and um, I could remember um, there was a time that what I was earning, I could save like, um, let me say, um, 30, 40 percent without me stressing myself. I'm still OK and I'm still a big guy. But um, after, you know, about six months of that, uh, um, that same money, you know, um, I had to double my, um, you know, source of income to be able to stay, stay on that um, standard. And um, now, I mean, it's now shrinking. So yeah, how do we save, and how do we still cultivate, you know, that habit of um, um, investing in ourselves? So for me, maybe I want you to, you know, give a perspective to this. For me, um, I would say instead of me saving money and deposit and you know investing money, what I do is I invest it in myself by using those money to attend conferences, buy courses. And, um, you know, just go to places, show up in some places rather than keeping the money. Because I just think, you know, those keeping the money is like a waste of resource, some sort. So what can you say to me um, in terms of um, I don't want to invest my money, like to keep money. I want to invest it in myself and develop myself because that helps me. I feel like I'm spending my money better. And yeah. So please, um, what can you say to us young guys, you know, and ladies? Okay, so yeah. this is this is why I was in particular about savings. Truth remains that in the Nigeria of today, if you put in ten thousand naira into the bank account, and then tomorrow at the end of the day, that ten thousand naira obviously is less than ten thousand naira. Okay, there there are ways you can do this, right? You edge against you know inflation by actually you know putting your money into safe havens. We have um, you know. The dollar, right, which is actually called the global safe haven in the world at the, at the current moment, right? Whilst that is there, right, for somebody like you, I think you're speaking. You know, you, I don't think from the way you spoke, I don't think you're a student. I think you you are in the outside world from 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 yeah. the way you spoke. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So one thing I always tell people, especially you know when you're in that ladder, is the fact that you need to be able to understand you know how to sort of like understand the, uh, the foundation of financial literacy, which is budgeting, right? Being able to look at your expenses and say that, you know, these things are not necessary, take them off. These things, being able to look at what comes in, right? How can you grow what comes in, right? How can you reduce your expense? But in Nigeria where we are today, a lot of the time, even though you try and cut and cut, you know, it is just very difficult, right? So actually even sort of like stash money away, you know, everybody's feeling that part. But one super important thing you need to be able to understand is that it's about the, 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 the muscles you are building, right? Right? First off, from the saving category and then being able to take that money and then using it for something useful. So something useful can then be, you know, investing into other asset classes. Now for your trajectory to be different from, you know, me speaking for a student, right? Could be then investing into other asset classes like I spoke about before, real estate, you know, um, you could invest into, um, you know, mutual funds, you could invest into fixed income investments, you could invest into collectibles, you could invest into other assets and classes, right? Um, that allows you to be able to grow your money and hedge against inflation, right? That allows you. There's also the part of investing into yourself as to which at the end of the day, you get better jobs, better, you know, side jobs that at the end of the day allows you to do other things. So now for me, what works is I always look at, you know, every month, what is coming in? How can I grow what is coming in? And it's not necessarily about, you know, picking up jobs and jobs and jobs and jobs, right? Right. It's being able to, you know, get to a point where at the end of the day, you know, you've been able to master a certain thing. And then this is the pay tier you can actually command for that certain thing that you're actually doing right and then that sort of like increases when that increases then you're able to sort of like you know then budget this amount goes into developing myself this amount goes into emergency fund this amount goes into you know um 
just savings. And I would always say, you know, when you save, you edge against okay. you edge against inflation, right? By um converting your money into dollars and keeping it for the long term. There are so many platforms you can use to do that. You have Rice Vest. Um, you could get, you know, a dollar card, right? You could change even from the molars, save in the bank, you know, and, and all of that. So yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. I hope um, Mr. J. Mary has been able to answer everyone's questions. And I apologize, we'll not be taking any more questions. But I believe that we caught something and we all caught value. Thank you so much, Mr. Jeremiah, for coming on today to speak to us about money matics. And as from today onward, we pledge to always, you know, to have a good, to have, um, to be financially literate. So thank you so much and God bless you. I really want us to go to the chat box and say thank you, Mr. Jeremiah. So right now, we are going to be having the next speaker. And um, the next speaker goes by the name Mr. Timmy. So Mr. Timmy is a goal-oriented, vision-driven, and purpose-minded individual. He is a certified project manager and an experienced procurement analyst. He presently serves as head of people and, and culture at Bitnob Technologies, a global cross-border remittance payment platform is a first class graduate in applied physics from the prestigious Ladoke Akintola University of Technology, Oyo State, Nigeria, and recently earned his MBA from Kwan Sik School of Business and Technology, Washington, DC, USA. He currently mentors young students in secondary and tertiary institutions towards academic excellence through the platform Academic Mentoring Class so they can replicate his results and the author of the book, Academic Excellence Demystified, where he outlined principles of excellence, especially for Christian students. Timmy is the host of Building Men Thoroughly, a medium with which he extends his passion to see young boys and men maximize their life and the lead coach of fitness Pro Coaching Inside. So ladies and gentlemen, with the Rouse Innovation, I'd like you to make welcome Mr. Tini. I'm so sorry that I did not um, say your, your second name. I don't want to mispronounce it. So I'd really love it if you could, you know, fully pronounce your name, sir. So Mr. Tini, can you hear me, please? Hi, greatness. Good evening. Oh, Confirm you can hear me. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Okay, it's Timmy Awesu. Awesu. Right, Mr. Timmy Awesu. <laughs> All right. Yes, um, I get it. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Oh, fantastic session. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jeremiah. Learned um, a couple of things. I think I joined around um, 7.57 or so. Good one, good one, good one. Thank you for blessing us with um, that intelligence level. Um, um, thank you, Patrick, for for bringing me in here. <laughs> and greatness, thank you. Well done. I think you are you are, you are doing this well. Well done. Well done. Well done. All right. Um. So if you can hear me, um. Good evening, everyone. Um. Adikbeju, Adramigba, um. Olamide, Caleb, Gloria, Jeremiah, Mr. Jeremiah, <laughs> Messi, Paul, and Uche. Um. So the misters and misses and miss and excellencies, um, good evening. Please confirm that you can hear me just in the chat box. Just give me a thumbs up, give me an emoji. Just let me know that you can hear me. Oh, Messi, how are you? It's good to see you here. <laughs> yeah, I see the thumbs up from greatness. I see from Gloria. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? I've not seen. Like, come on. We are, we are still quite a number here. Um, if I get 50% of us, it's fine. Um, give me that thumbs up if you can hear me and you can also see my screen all right tell me the good one got you and then i page you good one awesome stuff awesome stuff all right so good evening everyone um glad to be here uh i will be i will be talking i'm gonna have a conversation honestly my typical sessions i would have a full slide um yeah thank you Adra. 
I would have a full slide presentation, you know, pictures and all of that. Uh, but particularly for these events, I just thought, you know what, let's 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 have a conversation. Um, I don't want to teach. I want to I want to discuss. Um, I want to engage you, right? Um, I, I don't want to say a lot of things. Patrick has been to my sessions, so he will know that um, words using words is not a problem. When I thought about this meeting, I just I felt like I want to I want to leave you with one or two messages in this session, um, right? That you will be able to apply. Um, I'm very big on strategy execution. Um, so when I take sessions, either paid for sessions, online sessions, physical sessions, um, I tell my students, you know, my audience, um, make sure you leave with three things you're going to do. Action one, action two, action three. Earlier today, I was at an event. In short, all week I was in an event. Today, I went into another event. Um, I wouldn't say I don't know what they are saying, but I, I because of the, the mind that learns a lot, I said, you know what? Normally when we enter a session, I just bring out my notepad. I put action steps, then I put questions. So meaning I'm leaving this event with a minimum of three action steps and questions that I can query my mind, you know, with. So because I'm I'm very big on strategy execution, like execution is one of my forte. So I would advise you to. Um, just like, um, you know, Mr. Jeremiah said a lot of things in the last session, make sure that you come up with at least three things that you will do. You are exchanging your time for information. Um, you are exchanging your, your life for access to wisdom. So the best thing you can do towards ensuring transformation is to execute. That's the best thing you can do. Transformation never happens by just listening. Listening or interacting with knowledge is the first journey into transformation. So go back, check your life five years ago or 10 years ago. It is the information that you executed. It is the information that entered your mind that you processed and you substituted for certain ideologies that eventually led to where you are right now. And in the same format, it is the information you allow to enter your mind, you process, you execute, you allow that mind shift that eventually affects your outcome. So regardless of where you are, the principle remains the same, right? What just happens as you grow, you know, the skill of greatness, skill of influence, skill of all of those things is, um, you know a lot of principles already. So what happens is you keep refreshing, refreshing, you know, meeting new people, expanding the horizon, right? So I, I said all of that in, in five minutes to say, ensure that you take two action steps, right? Um, for example, for example, I myself, I'm very big on goals. And I, I tell myself every quarter I must attend one event. Professional, like I, do, I must attend one. And the goal of that is, to ensure that I can execute new things, um, right? I could also keep myself accountable to the principles that has helped me over the years. So I'm not starting my session. I'm just um, <laughs> I'm just letting you know how to maximize this session. So open your notepad. You don't need to write plenty things. Honestly, I'm not a fan of plenty things. Um, you can write a lot of things, but make sure you have action one, action two, action three, because it is the decisions that we make right that change everything it is the the willingness to choose a particular roadmap a, a point that changes everything for you so if you listen a lot and you're just wow like whoa just like many people be in church tomorrow <laughs> you know they'll be wow like pastor we teach again and my question has always been so what's the post church strategy what was the post-event strategy to ensure that I become what I had, right? What is the what's the what's the, what's the point? So please, 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 to maximize upgrade, to maximize this event, you must be able to look at yourself and choose one or two action steps that you can tie to this event. 
Um, I will be speaking and also we're having a discussion around relationships. Um the, the title, the title that, that was given to me was the catalyst called relationship. Um, so if you can still hear me, type one in the chat. Let me know if you can still hear me. If you can still hear me, type one in the chat box. Don't give me a thumbs up, just type one. Let me hear you. If you can still hear me, clearly type one. Mm -mm, I didn't say thumbs up. I said type one. It's deliberate. I have only one one. Wow. <laughs> Okay, I think um, three ones. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so let's talk about relationships. Um, thank you, Patrick, again, for bringing me here. The catalyst called relationship. Michelle, when I was thinking about it, like, I think relationship is more than a catalyst, Patrick and Tim. I think because if you from the definition of, a, of, of catalyst, it's like something that triggers a main chemical reaction or a main like equation. So I think it's both a catalyst and beyond. Um, I think relationship is the <laughs> is the is the essence of most of the things we eventually do. So let me give you let me give you for example. There's no there's no matter how much you develop yourself, it is a relationship either through a formal job engagement or a um a business strategy for people you need to sell. A product to or um you know any form of thing it is people you are going to use it to. it's people that are going to buy your product it's people who are going to pay you for for your product any any way you want it so no matter how good you become in life no matter how financially free no matter no matter how intelligent you are at school and all of that relationships are what make life like the essence of everything so also imagine that you are alone in the world right now and you have access to the bank you have access to you have access to all the AI, all the information, everything. <laughs> and somebody imagine that with me that you're you're the only one in the world and you have access to all the money and all of that. Do you think there's what 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 do you think will happen? Talk to me, talk to me in the chat box. If you want to unmute, I'm free. Come on. What do you think will happen? Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. For the people who are here and those of us who listen to the recording, um, talk to me, talk to me. What do you think will happen? You're the only one in the world right now. You have access to the billions. You have access to the to the Naira. You have access to all, you know, currency, people's ATM, and all of that. What do you What do you think will be the difference? Come on, somebody talk to me. It could be anybody. Exactly right. Greatness. It's going to be boring. In short, many things will be impossible. The Amala Junction, you need to go and eat. Nobody's going to do Amala for you. Like... We, we, we don't know how much and when we talk about relationships i'm going to take it at in the short term i'll take it across you know different layers people people are at the essence for engagement of life like it is human beings maybe you have underrated men or people generally the concept of people man you know before i come into relationship that is how it affects you that is your own connection point to to you know these other men People in people have not sometimes we, we lose so much, we lose we lose the essence of life that we do not appreciate the fact that we have people, people to use our product, people to listen to us in sessions like this, people to pay us money, you know, for those who, who, who couldn't who take salary, people to buy your product in case you're an entrepreneur, people to like your post on Facebook, people like everything is connected to the influence of people, and it's upon relationships that we have people. So if you've not genuinely appreciated men people in life i think it's it's high time you do that because the person who will give you a listening here is a human being is a person and that's a form of relationship so that's the first foundation i want you to to understand that people human beings are one of the essence of our our moving forward our in short even moving backward to his people before we now come to the impact of this relationship when I look at when I look at my life personally, um, I can come here and look at I have plenty of books <laughs> behind my behind me. I can just carry a book here and read it to you. But I, I said I was not going to do that. Um, when I look at my life personally, you know, um, 
it is very interesting to see that relationships have been very, very paramount. And, you know, in, in our, in my life and in the life of the people around me, and when I say relationships, I don't just mean the passivity. We'll, we'll talk about that. When, when many people think relationship, they think from a passive manner. I'm talking about active relationship building. And, and we'll, we'll get there. So when I look at myself, is it from the scholarships I got when I was in school? Is it from the information I heard about, you know, the scholarships I, I could get? Is it from the, the job recommendations? Is it from my first job? Is it from um, the school I eventually attended? Is it from the person that, that you know, I stayed with on campus that paid my entire accommodation fee for five years? Is it to, um, you know, is it to the person I eventually got married to? Like, everything, everything. Is it from the, the lecturers I got to know in my department when I eventually came up with first class? Or is it from the students I got to coach and mentor? Everything had relationships at the at the you know the foundation how i treated the relationships or how the relationship treated me is impacted outcomes and i want you to think about it like that we're still discussing the, your current outcomes are influenced by relationship all of it all of it some of the relationships you entered into you came in by force for example your family like your brothers your sister your mom your dad they are their relationships that you did not choose you just came in, you plunged into it, right? There are other relationships that as you began to grow, you were given the response. You began to act, you began to attract people like that. You began to um, you began to you know bring those kind of people into your your life, either by your choices, by your person, by your demeanor, you know all of those. So to understand the impact of relationship, isolate yourself for. For a couple of for a couple of months, and I'm not even I'm not I'm not still talking about the impact on if you even now do purposeful stuff when when people are literally depending on your light, your information, your wisdom, your access to be able to process their life to do things. So all I've said in the last ten minutes is relationships. I know you've heard it are powerful. Good relationships are powerful. So I would like to talk about. Um, three layer, three layers. First, when we, when we talk about relationship, don't think about it from a marriage point of view. When you are in, in, in school, you know people will tell you, oh, oh. when you are, when they get a relationship, like everybody is already thinking brother and sister. No, 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 no. Be broad. Think broad. Think broad. I'm not sure everybody is still in school here. I think some people are in school. Some people are not in school any longer. Um, I don't know. Am I am I correct, Patrick? Or is everybody here a student? I think some of us should be out of school anyways. Talk to me. Are you there, Patrick? Oh, greatness. Do you know? You have that information. Is everyone here a student? Or some of us are not students? Um, Some of some people here are not students. Not everyone. But I think good. majority of us are students. Ah, okay, good, good, good. That's fine. So... Uh, it's, it's a good time to still talk about it. So first, first thing is, how do you, how do you make, how do you get into relationships generally, generally? So in life, when you start out as a child, you like, like I said previously, you have your parents, your brothers, your sisters. You don't define all of those relationships. They they come with your life, right? They come with you. They come with your environment. And you know, over the years, we found out that environment is the principal catalyst or principal, you know, trigger to people's mind. The environment where they grew. You've heard it, but you've not audited yourself. If you have some of the things you have having issues with, you would have tracked it to your environment and you would have addressed it. Environment, the ones we we grew up in and the ones we eventually allowed, you know, as we became adults, you know, teenagers and all of that, is responsible for your outcome right now. So if you can audit the environment you came from and audit the environment you, you have currently created for yourself, you can actually see a gap to know what is what is wrong. So some relationships you entered into, you know, you, nobody, you didn't, you didn't ask God or life, you know, just pulled into a relationship. But as you begin to grow into your teenagers, you begin to have some sense of like, oh, this is my person. Some Like you begin to know your uniqueness. 
Now, those uniqueness now lead to the kind of people that you begin to attract. Of course, this is also layered on the, on the foundation of your parents. If your parents are influential, it also in, impacts the kind of relationships you have access to. If your parents um, are not influential, or maybe they, you grew up in a very you know, slum area, it also in, impacts the kind of relationships that you, you see, what you see when you grow. But as you begin to, even in your teenage years, because you are still not fully in that decision-making mode, you don't own your life fully at that particular point in time, there's still a limit to the people you can choose. So your house, your, your house is in a particular area because that's where your dad can afford at that particular point in time. Hence, it limits the kind of people you choose as at that time. I'm not so we are going to come to the impact of technology and influence of online and all of that that happens to you know relationship. We're we're getting there. I'm building. Now you are there as a teenager. It limits the option of choices you could choose. Then as you begin to hit your 1920s, 21, you become entirely responsible for the people in your circle entirely right and that is where we we all do not have an excuse any longer if if you have found people in your space either both at the um vertical level horizontal level both at your both your upline and your downline i'm coming there levels of relationship whether or not whether whether whatever you have whatever you have found in your life now you are irresponsible I know in Nigeria and Africa, we say, ah, it's grace, grace, grace. Yes, I understand what grace is. <laughs> grace, first, is powered by knowledge. And knowledge informs choices. Like right now, I could decide to be in an Okwaja on that breed, eating 1K, like right now. <laughs> That's the power of your choice, right? I know some of us feel, oh, I don't have a lot of options and choices. You actually have a lot of options and choices. It's just that you've not... Your perception is currently affecting that. You could choose to go online now. You could choose to. That's the power of freedom you have. That is why one of the one of the worst things you can do to a human being is to take away their freedom. Either put them in a put them in a prison or take away their access to life. You have crippled a human being. Right? You crippled the person. But if the person has been taught advanced mind, you know, strategies, the person can even still be able to process where they're when when they're alone and all of that. But let's not go there. So what I've said so far is when you are in your 20s. You are fully responsible for the people in your circle. You are you become fully responsible because at that point in time you can make a choice. Now let's add the online layer and you know the technological advancements in our age. There are a lot of technological, you know, social media, internet boom, you know, all of those people say network, network, network. I'm coming to that. I, I should even write an article on that because some people just say network. Go to part. Go to go to conferences. And just meet people and talk. No, there is in relationship, it's a two-way thing. There is a, a value-driven mindset where you are entering a relationship because of what you can add, because of what you can give. The issue with people in relationship, most people, not everyone, is they want to take. They want to take of your skill, they want to take of your influence, they want to take of your gifts, they want to take of your money, they want to take, they want to take. No, for you here, see relationship as what you are going to add. Now, if you approach relationship like that, you would open doors to more relationship, right? And actually, when you are a student, you might not see the impact of this, even though you still see the impact of this. Anyways, thinking about it, most people are very focused on the academics, but emotional intelligence is a factor of the capacity to, to build lasting relationships and how much those lasting relationships impact your life. In short, at the end of your life, 100 years, 120 years, some of the things you are going to value the most or fundamentally, according to research, depending on how you measure your life, is going to be the relationships you've come to make, the experiences, the memories you've had with people, good or bad. And in life, you're going to meet a lot of diverse kinds of people and they will factor a lot of things about your relationship. So, but let me, let me go into the phases of relationships so you can have pre-relationships and a time when there's, there are no, these people are not in your life. Like right now, Maybe somebody, you just need a connection for a job or an offer. There's, there's, that person is somewhere, but you, you are here. The work is, how do I get myself to a place where this person can see me? Or where I can, you know, access, they can access me. Because if that person doesn't see you, they will not see the skill you give that you have. They won't even know that you have value to give. Right? So there's that phase of relationship. There's another phase of relationship when you are in the relationship. And notice, we said, don't think about relationship, just about marriage. Think about it across um 
um, family, um, business relationships, you know, friendship, covenant relationship. Think about it around acquaintances in your in your house, your hostel, you know, think about it like that. So for every interaction with everybody, every human being you come, it's a level of relationship. So wisdom is the, is the ability to be able to assess that, that distance. So what's the distance between me and Patrick compared to the distance between myself and my wife? <laughs> it is the level of relationship. So the distance between myself and Patrick allows some things to happen. For example, Patrick, you know, has been, he's been he comes to our meetings from time to time. That distance has enabled him to be able to invite me for this meeting. Literally, I was just a chat away. But you can compare that level of relationship to my wife that can walk into my office right now. So it means that for everybody in your life, if we, are to, if we are to put you in the center and do like a schematic map, we can track the dis their distance to you depending on how much access they have. Now, the, once you have that, you can then begin to ask yourself critical questions in terms of the quality of the relationship. How, quality, how qualitative is this relationship? Two, what am I supposed to, is this relationship mutual? Is it helping me move towards my goals, my strategy, the things I want to eventually become? Is this relationship helping me? So I'm, I'm looking at relationship more from a, from a very analytical, scientific, scientific you know, way. So you need to look at your life now because where you need to get to in another five years is layered upon the kind of persons you meet the kinds of person you have become so the kind of person you have become would affect the kind of persons you would eventually meet because the kind of person you will become would affect your outputs in the economy would affect your outputs in life would affect your the, the vibe you are giving in giving out into space into the into um into the cosmos right into places So, and I'm not talking about being a likable person. I'm coming to levels of relationship shortly in another five minutes. I'm not talking about being a, uh, not likable, I mean, uh, being a, somebody that everybody likes. No, you, you don't have to function well in life by everybody liking you. No, you don't have to. You have to function well in life with a specific number of people you are really accountable to who really like you. You don't have to, but you must be a, be a person who is emotionally intelligent. Your relationship with the gates man at your estate gate, you are you are a better human being. You are a good human being. So first, relationship from your end as a good person, and it is good when you are developing yourself because it will impact. It will impact if you can give somebody money in under two or three years, like a tip. So when people do not work on themselves, when people are not developing their skills, when people are not you know improving themselves, they are going to affect the relationship they eventually have. They're going to influence the relationship they have with their children in the long run. So see development, see growth from a point of, if I improve myself, I would improve the relationships around me. And the relationships around me will then come back to invest in me. Because everything you do, you would, you would, you would give out relationships. You would, you would give in relationships. And there are levels of relationships. I don't know if you want to write that down, but... <laughs> I'm just discussing out of, out of what has worked for me over the years. I have a full library here, like about, I think it's like 100 books. Somebody was migrating, you know, to the United Kingdom and just, I felt like, ah, who do I give all these books? I, I, who, who do I give all these books? <laughs> he, does, he didn't have a lot of people who liked books in his life. I just said, you know, Timmy, you know what? Hello, wait, 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 wait. Come, on, come and take all these books from mine. Just take all it. He gave me. A hundred plus books. These are, these are this is my own library at my back. These books are here. I'm like, why would somebody do that? It's a relationship. The job, the business idea, the investment you're waiting for is a relationship away. And you have to make yourself that kind of person that is easy to attract good relationship. You don't have to be in relationship with everybody. You have to find the quality relationships. You have to find, some people call it destiny relationships that you have to be in connection with. Alone with those low, like, oh, it's only me, my life. It's only like, <laughs> I'm the only one. No, there is no self-made anybody anywhere. 
I know people say, oh, I'm a self-made millionaire. If people did not buy your product, you're not going to make any, you're not going to make a dime. <laughs> if you wouldn't invest in your business, you would not have, you wouldn't scale. So this is very important. Our levels of interaction with people must improve. So look at yourself right now in your hostel in your house. Audit your relationship levels. Cut off toxic relationships. You, I, I don't understand the math. Cut it off. People don't understand how much toxic relationship affects them. Cut it off. Cut it off. So in your levels of relationships, there are people that are your up, you know, mentors, coaches, you know, people you look up to, people that really help you, people that can add value to you. They can be both close or far away. Do you understand? They can be both online or offline. I followed Dr. Miles Munro for a long time till date, even though he has gone to bodily, he's gone to heaven. But I've been following him online since like forever. I met him once. And most of his ideologies, he has transferred into my head because I read his book. I believe what he's saying. So sometimes some of the relationships you would eventually have that will transform your life would necessarily not be impact. You can compare that to maybe you now have a relationship like a pastor. A pastor, you are, you, so you must have pastors, teachers, coaches, people too that can keep you accountable, upside. Then you have contemporaries, people who share your aspirations, people who want to go where you want to go, people who are your, in quote, contemporaries, your level, in quote. Friends, these are where your covenant friends fall into. You know, these are network relationships you get into. Maybe you do an MBA program, you come into that, that those people are at that, that level. These are relationships. You know, you know, your neighbor that you both have a car, you come to all of those people, you must, those relationships, you must know how to relate to those relationships. You must measure the distance and ask yourself every time, how can I improve this, this relationship? How can this relationship improve me? And this is the same thing even with God. But let's not go there. <laughs> right? Then you must have people that look up to you, people that feed from you, people that you give money, give, give tip people money regularly give people money relax the economy is hard for a couple of people if you have if you don't have give what you have somebody's praying that you should have exactly what you have right now so give give information for free give people tip the gate man when you go and buy food leave the 15 hour for them do that because in your mind those people don't have what you have your your mentees you know the people looking up to you your your junior ones you know your nieces and nephews people looking up to you you know the driver the woman selling pepper people yes they they might necessarily not um they might necessarily not call you sir or ma but they are in code they don't have some of the things you have so you must see yourself from that given side you must see yourself from that helping side now these blocks of relationship and other you know vertical posts you know that the other relations that are you know just shoot out from even areas time will not permit us to look at all of that invest in them but you need to pay attention to your life right now. Look at it. I know a lot of people, both male and female, are very pressured. They want to get married. They want to get into a relationship by all means. But most people are not fantastic human beings. They are not good people at their core. Fantastic people. They don't have a fantastic, great emotional intelligence with people around their life. They are not enjoying their life. So they think that when they get married or when they when they have found the person they want to marry, that's when they will not start enjoying life. No, don't do that to yourself. You are a blessing to your world. Do you understand that? So live in such a way that relationships feed in and out. Because your number one issue right now is a relationship that caused it. Your number one issue, your number one blessing right now was a relationship that brought it. <laughs> All right. I think I'll just I'll stop here. Um, a couple of book recommendations. Um, I think you should read Talent is Never Enough. <clears throat> read the relationship part. <laughs> John, John Maxwell says that um, relationship influences your talent. Um, look at, um, read How to <laughs> Influence People by um, Dale Kennedy, fantastic book. Then um, I think John Maxwell also wrote a book where I learned the law of common ground. That's a very, very fantastic law to be able to, to like strike conversations with people. When you meet people for the first time, some people don't know what to say. Look for a common, look for a common ground. Look for a common ground. Just, it's called the law of common ground, law of interests, right? That's why when people build communities, they build it around certain interests, right? That, those are how relationships form. And don't force relationships. 
anytime anybody doesn't want to give to a relationship, just free them, relax, right? There are people who are at core at your life. Make sure you get that right. Your your fiance or your 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 wife or your husband, um, your covenant friends, people you are accountable to, your coach, your teacher, your pastor, your mentees. Those are blocks of relationship you should have in your life. All right, so I think we'll stop it here. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. All I've said in the last 30 minutes is reevaluate your relationships. Um, prioritize them. When you want to network, look at what you can give first. Don't think about networking as I want to collect, I want to collect, I want to collect. No, you will not be able to network properly. And you will just be going to events. You will not strike relationships. So when you go to an event, ask yourself, what can I give this person in this event? What can I, who can I give something? And from there, strike a relationship. It could be a counsel. It could be a help your, you know, networking better. All right, everyone. Um, that will be it for tonight. Um, thank you very much for bringing me here. I wish we'd have done more, but time will not permit us. Thank you. Wow, amazing. Thank you so much, sir. That was I'd like to ask if anyone has questions. Does anyone have questions? You could unmute yourself or write in the chat box. Okay. I have a question for you, sir. And my question is sure. you, there was a point where you talked about um, toxic relationships. So I'd like to ask, how can a person identify um, and address uh, toxic elements in a relationship, like a friendship or, yes, a friendship most especially? Oh, that's, that's good. I like, I like that question. Thank you, greatness. Um, when it is, so, you know, I'm in the HR space currently. Um, um yeah the second book is how to win friends and influence people dale kennedy i think with you um how to win friends and influence people so uh, when he, when he, i'm in the hr space and i deal a lot with people so when you're in toxic boss toxic boss we're coming to that ah there's no time i'm actually supposed to jump into another meeting now but let me just let me just quickly answer this question so in terms of toxicity in relationships how do you identify and how are you able to like get yourself out identification and getting yourself out first um everybody i expect that every human being every sane forward-thinking human being should have targets goals strategy things they want to do with their life all right no matter how minute it looks like every forward-thinking human being should have an aspiration of something they want to do something they want to become now any relationship that does not in any way contribute to that could be toxic to you right now let me explain so does it mean that every relationship that is not connected to my goal is toxic no so what i'm saying is that some relationship drag you they drag you back either they either they 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 cause a blocker to your becoming the kind of person who would fulfill those things if that god's purpose for your life either you know goals and visions that you picked up so those people those those things events you know human beings relationship by the time you look at it very well, over a time, they have not contributed significantly. And we're not talking about perfection. We're talking about that they should, when you weigh the impact of that relationship, there should be more good, more push. So, but once it's dragging you away from your core, from your targets, from why, either through various means, it can be either by um, toying with your heart, for example, in a relationship, toying with your heart, it could be, um, people who pull down your self-esteem, people who don't see good in you, people who amplify your mistakes all the time. Um, it could be, it could be even be family members that do all of these things. Whatever category of layers of relationship they are, once that person or those people do not eventually, you know, push you towards your target, your goals, becoming a better person, that's very toxic for you. Because each time, so one of the ways you know is each time I enter into a relationship when we have a conversation or something, I feel like something's pulling out of me. I feel like I'm always losing something. So I'm not talking about blessing people or impacting people with knowledge. You just feel, you feel like you are being drawn backwards. You don't feel added onto, right? 
So it always attacks your self-esteem. They always attack your the good things you are doing. There's jealousy. So jealousy, strife, slander, all of these things come together to put an element of toxicity in your relationship. So you can identify, once you have identified that, cut it off. See, the solution to a toxic relationship is cut it off. Even your family members, what you can do to them is limit, manage the issues, just manage it. Because if you allow toxicity to you know, thrive in your environment, you will not fulfill your destiny. <laughs> it's not a lie. You will not fulfill your destiny. You can go and ask Jesus Christ or study his life. He got rid of toxic people and he focused on his focus. You. All right. I hope that helps. That helps them. Um, greatness. Yes, yes, sir. That really, 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 really helps. The solution to toxicity is to cut it off. Yes, thank you so much, sir, for, you know, coming and giving us a lot of value. I have my notes here, and I'm so sure that a lot of us have our action steps already. Thank you once again, sir. Um, right now, we'll be having Patrick the visionary beyond, I mean, the visionary behind Upgrade to come give his vote of thanks. Then I'll round up. All right. Thank you, Greatness. Um, I want to express my sincere gratitude to Mr. Timmy um, for showing up tonight and sharing from his world of wisdom. Thank you so much, sir. We are grateful. Um, Mr. Um, Jeremiah Bankoli sends his greeting. He said, I should, extend, I should send his regards to you, sir. Good, good one. Good one. That's fine. Thanks. And well done, too. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you so much, sir. All right. I want to extend my gratitude to um, all the particip participants. Um, those that have joined us and those maybe due to one um, reason or the other, they are no longer on this call. Um, thank you everyone for joining in. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for um, your data. Thank you for all the sacrifices you, you needed to make in order to make it to this meeting. Thank you so much. Um, the video recording for yesterday's meeting, is um, live on YouTube already. You can catch up with it so that you can learn from the two speakers that engaged us yesterday. And also tonight's session will also be made available on the same YouTube channel um, latest by tomorrow. Let's um, watch out for it and also share with people. So thank you, thank you so much. And also lastly, I'd like to get feedback from us. We can... Um, you can easily send me a DM via WhatsApp um, on my line or send me an email on patrickoedili at gmail.com. Patrickoedili at gmail.com. Thank you so much. All right. Amazing. Thank you, Patrick. So we have finally come to the end of the online event. A big thank you to the speakers who spoke today and yesterday in person of Dr. Mushope, Dr. Ateki Bay Victor, Mr. Jeremiah Dibayo Bankole, Mr. Timi, and thanks to the visionary behind Upgrade for birthing this. It was sure a mind shift convergence. I do appreciate everyone for your willingness to invest in self-growth. I hope you caught a lot of value because I did too. After this webinar, I want you to take note of your action steps and work on them. Until next time, my name is Greatness Latono and you can call me the Global MC. I am very open to connecting with everyone on this meeting. Thank you for having me. And have a great night rest. Bye, everyone. Thank you.